What is going on guys? Welcome to Extreme Daily Drivers, another Toaster Tuesday and dude I'm super psyched for today's video. We're going to continue on with the audio stuff that we're doing in our box. Today we're installing a sub and an amplifier, two things I've never installed before. So I'm really going to need your guys help down in the comments because not only are we actually going to install this stuff, but we're going to tune the amp as well. And that's where things get a little tricky. I've done a ton of research online, watching YouTube videos, reading stuff, and uh, still not a lot of great information about how to actually do this the right way. We're going to be trying to do it by ear. We're not going to be using a multimeter or anything like that because I think it's just the simplest way to get it done. But anyway, let me show you what I got. Let me show you what we're installing today. Super pumped on this. All right, so here's what we're installing. We got ourselves a subwoofer, we got ourselves an amplifier, and we got ourselves a wiring kit for the amp. So let's get started here. This Kunu Concepts, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, there are a ton of different amp kits that you can purchase, whether you're buying them from Amazon, whether you're buying from Sonic Electric, whether you're buying from Crutchfield, eBay, it doesn't matter where you get it, there are a bazillion of these, and you can get them as cheap as like $17, <clears throat> or as expensive as like 100 this one I got somewhere in the middle. I think wiring is really important when you're wiring stuff up. So I spent a little extra money on this. This was $40 off of Amazon. And here you go. This is the amp wire for turning it on. These are our RCAs. We're hooking it up to the, uh, to the head unit. These are our little fittings that go on the end of the wires. And uh, we got ourselves an inline fuse. And then there's some speaker wire, ground wire, and power wire. So everything you need to install an amp even comes with some directions, which I really haven't actually taken a look at these directions just yet, but I think I know what I'm doing here, and this should be pretty sweet. All right, moving on to the amplifier. Now, I actually didn't spend a lot of money on the amplifier. Initially, I was going to spend money on about a $200 amp. I decided to dial that back and uh, spent only like $68 for this uh, alleged 1500 watt amp and uh, if you know anything about amps this thing's nowhere near 1500 watts but um this thing got really good reviews on amazon and uh as you can see i've kind of rifled through some of this already but um it, it seems to have everything what i like about it it comes with a little base adjustment knob okay we'll be installing that later on um and basically everything else you need that's for the base adjustment knob I'm not gonna pull this out of the box right now but let's move over to the subwoofer. All right, now for the subwoofer, we went with the tried and true bazooka base tube. I think I've told you guys in the past, I had one of these installed in a Civic 20 years ago and it was an amplified model and the thing was decent, it was a 10. Uh, I got it installed by a place called Circuit City. Um, they did a pretty good job, I was pretty happy with it. But this is not an amplified tube. This is a passive tube. So basically you need an amplifier to drive this thing. And I've kind of always heard that the passive ones are better than the amplified ones because you get to kind of pick and choose um, your amp. Uh, so we are going to be installing this guy. I'm really excited about this. Uh, our goal, okay, because of the music that we listen to, we listen to a lot of hard rock, a lot of uh, industrial music, some electronic music. So we need kind of hard hitting bass. We don't listen to any rap music or anything with like low droning noises. Um, we're not trying to shake our hatch off our car or anything like that. We need something with like a quick punch of base. So I think this is going to be really good for us. I'm excited to get it installed and it should fit in the box perfectly. All right. So when you're installing an amp and a sub, you have to actually do a little bit of planning. You got to know where your sub's going to go. You got to know where your amp is going to go and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to wire it. So made some decisions back here. The sub is going to go right here. It's kind of the perfect spot for it. Number one, it offsets the weight of me in the car because this thing weighs uh, somewhere around 15 pounds. So having it on the passenger side will help a little bit with the weight distribution. It also fits perfectly in here just as planned. When the hatch is closed, there's about four or five inches of space between the back of the speaker and the rear of the hatch, which is perfect for giving that nice tight bass sound. And then amp installation, we're going to keep it very close to the uh, sub and we're going to install this down in the cubby down here and we'll do all our wiring in there and then we're going to run our wiring underneath this panel, underneath the kick plate of the passenger side door, underneath the kick plate of the driver's side door, underneath the dash and into the engine bay. So now that we have that all figured out, it's time to start kind of disassembling the interior of the car. I'm gonna start by removing the plastics all right here in this area. 
and then the kick panels and then we'll work our way into the engine and we'll actually start to get to work. If you guys wanna know how to remove this rear piece of plastic right here that houses the rear speaker, go ahead and check out the last video I did on speaker installation. I'll put a link down in the description box. It shows you step by step how to remove that piece of plastic, but for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and start disassembling things. All right, man, I'm getting pretty good at taking the car apart. I did this in less than 15 minutes and check it out. We got everything removed that we need removed. So once again, let me kind of go over how I'm going to mount things. All right, so this is where the amp is going to go. I'm going to find a way to secure it to this little uh, built in here that we all have. I'm going to mount it in this exact fashion. Now, the reason is, is there's a heat sink up here and there's a heat sink down here. I don't want those too close to anything because if you install an amp, no matter where you install it, it has to be able to breathe because these things do generate heat. So I think this is going to be a good location. Also, I took off the little top pieces of the amp just to give me better exposure to the connections. On this side of the amp, we have power, okay, and we have our speaker connection. So we're going to have a power wire coming from the battery. We're going to have a remote wire going from the amp to the head unit, and then we have a ground wire going from the amp to the chassis, okay? So these will all be on this side of the car and then on this side of the amp the only thing we actually have to connect are the rcas and then also the remote for the uh little base booster so that's all that has to go on this side and i think there'll be enough room for the wiring to kind of snake around and come exit out the little container to the right all right so we got this laid out we know where this is going to go now we have to think about running our power wire so the power wire is obviously gonna to have to come from the battery. So here we are in the engine compartment and we are going to have to get that power wire to this lug and then snake it all around and make its way all the way to the rear of the car. So the way we're gonna do that is we are gonna run our line from here back underneath this firewall here and then to this grommet right here. Can you guys see that? I hope the lighting is really good. There's a little grommet right there. We're gonna pull this off, we're gonna cut a little end off of it, run a power wire through there. It's going to come out underneath the dashboard. And you see I've already removed all these kick panels and this little panel here, they just pull off. There's no trick to it at all. You don't need a tool. You just reach your hand in there and yank it off. It's gonna snake down here along the sill you can see here i already got a kind of glow rod sent in here to help me pull it through okay you can use a coat hanger if you don't have one of these but i'm just really just trying to get um behind this panel here so i got this already pre-run so it's going to go underneath that panel here's the other end of the glow rod okay on the other end of the panel and then it's going to snake up through here and then make its way to the amplifier so now before we start doing any of this actual wiring, this is a must. You have to disconnect the negative terminal on your car battery. So go ahead and grab yourself a 12 millimeter or whatever you got on yours and get this disconnected. This is a must. You cannot skip this step. Make sure you do it. All right, so let me show you where we're at. Okay, so I did what I said we were doing, right? I pulled this grommet out. I cut an end off one of the, um, the little nipples there so we could put our wire through. And now I have a coat hanger going from the firewall, this hole, down. And I pulled the glove box out. All right, glove box. But there it is. Check it out. So now all we have to do is tie on to this and pull it up. And to get one more thing done, I went ahead and crimped on one of the terminals here that came with the kit. Now this crimp is not the prettiest crimp in the world. Uh, I kind of used a crimper that I owned and I thought would be good and uh, it does do a pretty good job. Here it is. I've featured it in other videos. Um, I'll put a link down in the description if you want. This one didn't turn out all that pretty, but uh, believe me, it's on there. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this onto our little pull string slash coat hanger and pull this guy up into the engine bay. Making progress. You see that little blue wire coming out of the grommet? Got the grommet all put back together. Actually zip tied the blue wire underneath the cowl is now we're going to install this inline fuse which goes very close to the power terminal on the battery so we're going to want to splice it in somewhere right about here all right so i think we're pretty much done in the engine bay i got that fuse spliced in there and this is going to hook on to the terminal right here so plenty of length and that should be fine i might even zip tie it to something uh, when all said and done, but I think we're all finished in the engine bay and this is the hardest part of the install So I'm glad it's finished. 
So now back where the amp is going, I went ahead and cut a hole inside of the styrofoam and ran the excess wire through. You can see why I was concerned about length, um, but it looks like we have about three feet excess, which is fantastic. So now we're gonna go ahead and wire up the negative. And one of the reasons I wanted to pick this spot for amp location is because when I went ahead and changed out these speakers, I saw that there was a great grounding spot right here. Nice short distance to the amp and that's what you want when you're grounding anything. You want the shortest distance possible. So here is our ground wire. I actually didn't trim it at all. I think it's kind of a good length. I think it's two feet and I think that'll be fine. Went ahead and put our little terminal on there to mount to the chassis and then I used one of their fancy dancy terminals to mount to the amp and uh, this one I went on really well. As you can see it's a pretty darn good crimp so I'm happy with that. Alright got that fastened nicely. Snaked around and again coming into our little box so now that i know how long that negative is and i like kind of the distance of it making its way to the terminal here now i know how long to cut my positive so i'm gonna go ahead and trim this and put the same fitting on it so that we'll be able to hook it up to the amp all right guys what do you think of my crimping huh getting better getting better so anyway power negative finished okay now i just want to show you real quick why i went with this wire because man it's pretty darn good i mean Look at all the wire in there. A lot of times if you look at wiring that uh, is inferior, there'll be a lot more insulation and a lot less wire. So this is ensuring I'm gonna get a really good connection. So really happy with this. And if you guys are wondering how I'm making my cuts, all I'm doing is I'm using a razor blade here, going around it, cutting insulation away, and then inserting the wire. All right guys, let's finish up the wiring for this project. We got our RCAs. We gotta install these to the head unit. We got this guy, which looks like a little telephone cord, and this is going to run to our boost control knob that we're going to mount somewhere on the dashboard, obviously on the driver's side. And then we got this blue wire here, which is our signal wire. This is going to tell the amp to turn on. So when we turn on a receiver, this is going to tell the amp to power on, and we're going to hook this to the head unit. All three things here can run along the side of the car, just like the power wire, so we're going to use the same channel, zip tie it all together, and uh, hook our amp up. All right, we got our wires, ran to our amp. I'll take you around here. I put the kick plate on just to make sure that would work. But you can see there, I zip tied it down along there. Still not finished with the zip ties. You can see it underneath here, underneath the door sill, where it's making its way up behind the glove box and into our head unit area, <laughs> okay? So my head unit that you see right there, I did a video on it a couple weeks ago comes with this wiring harness that allows you to use the RCAs, these guys here, to send the signal, basically the bass signal, to the amplifier so the amplifier actually knows to tell the speaker when to fire. I believe that's how it works. So that's this guy here. These are aux left and right out. I believe I need out. There's also in, but I don't think we need in, we need out. The other wire we're concerned with is this guy here. This says amp connection. So we're gonna wire our little blue wire, this guy, to the amp connection, and then these RCA leads, which are taped up to my, my uh, coat hanger, they are going to plug in to these guys here. All right guys, we are getting there, man. This installation is kicking my butt. Kicking my butt, but we pretty much have the amp installed, okay? Now I don't have it in that little, thing that it's going to sit in because I want to make sure all the connections are good before I go ahead and make a final installation here but I got everything wired up nice and tight I really like the terminals on this amp so far they've been excellent um, and then over here everything is plugged in on this side let me give you guys a better look at it all right so we're all plugged in and ready to go so last thing we gotta do is install the speaker now the speaker is gonna wire into here we have a positive and a negative so I went ahead and use these terminals on here that came with the uh, amp kit. And now these ends are gonna go to our sub over here, very basic on the back of the bazooka tube. And basically there is a positive and a negative. There are two sets of these. I think it's to install multiple amps. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think it matters. The directions are really bad with bazooka. So we're gonna kinda give it a shot, but I'm gonna send these guys in here and uh, we're gonna hook this thing up. All right guys, it's a home stretch back here. I got all the pieces back in, and boy, I had to wrestle this guy in there. There's a lot less room in here for kind of any extra space than I thought. These styrofoam pieces fit so tight. But anyway, gotta reinstall the amp, 
But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and mount the bazooka tube. And pretty straightforward on how to mount this. They come with these little brackets here. All right, these strap brackets, hold up here so you can see it. So these strap brackets hold the tube down, you mount them, and then they go around the tube. Seems kind of cheesy, but Bazooka has been doing it this way for like 30 years, and it's been working. <laughs> so I'm not gonna argue with it. It's the same way it was in my Civic 2, and I didn't have any issues. So um, I marked on here where this tube sits and how I want my straps to go. So they are gonna go like so. One here and one here. Let me get it mounted up, and then we can then mount the tube. All right, so you see here the amp is hooked up. It does say anarchy down there. <laughs> Pretty cool. Unfortunately, no one's going to see that because I'm about to put the lid on and mount the sub. But, you know, I did myself some injustice here. I didn't make those wires long enough. Uh, I made it too perfect, which makes it hard to work on. Um, it really shouldn't matter as far as performance goes. But it's just disappointing. I'm going to probably wind up redoing this at some point and coming up with a, maybe a better location or something like that. It'll be fine for now, but I'm not 100% satisfied with it. Um, but anyway, it works. It works. Everything looks good. So let's go ahead and put this top on here. You can see I ran my speaker wire through a little hole that I made. Let's put this on. Let's mount the sub and let's finish this install. All right, there you have it, guys. Sub amp install in the box. And let me tell you something. This was a marathon day for me, man. This took a long time. It wasn't really hard. Nothing like happened that was really time consuming or really, really difficult. It just took forever. It took forever. I, who does this for a living? Oh my God. Holy cow. God bless you. If you do this for a living, this is probably the easiest car in the world to even do this install on. And it took me like five, six hours. I can't even tell you how long it took, but it whooped my butt. I'll tell you that, but it's done. It's done. I wish I could let you hear it. I wish I could let you hear it, but I can't. I can't let you hear it because of all the copyright stuff that goes on with YouTube. But I'm satisfied with it, man. I'm satisfied with it. I, I'm a little too tired and exhausted right now to like, go bananas crazy about it, but I got a lot of tuning still to do with it to get it exactly the way I want it, but it's, it sounds great. It's, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. And it did take a long time to do that install, but it really turned out really clean. So engine bay looks really clean. There's no signs of any wiring inside the car and the sub install is clean. The amp install, I wish I made those lines longer, but it is what it is. Um, I'm going to still have to trim this. I'll have to figure out if I want to cut this up um, in order for the brackets to work with the uh, sub back here. But that's going to be another time. That's going to be another time. <laughs> I'll just beat for today. So anyway, guys, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. And it was a freaking marathon, man. <laughs> anyway, happy Toaster Tuesday. We'll see you next week, and uh, we're going to continue on. We're continuing on with the audio stuff. As, as much as I don't, want to, I don't want to do it anymore as of right this second, we're continuing on with some sound deadening for the box. So now that we got this thing thumping, we don't want it to be a rattle machine. So anyway, guys, until then, have a great week. Happy Toast Tuesday. Later. So what did you guys think about that installation, huh? Pretty crazy. And let me tell you, I was worn out by the end of that day. But after putting this video together and watching it, I feel like I kind of sold myself short on giving you guys kind of a final glimpse of the walkthrough of the installation. Let me show you the engine bay here. All right, so this is the finished product. And uh, I'm super happy with the way this turned out. This is super tidy. I got my little... Um, inline fuse zip tied to the positive terminal it's run underneath the cowl up against the firewall with some zip ties and then right through that little grommet right there so engine bay turned out awesome really happy with this i think it's a super clean installation and then as we come over here passenger side you can see kind of everything's been put back together as well as underneath here once again passenger side over here Everything's put back together, all the plastics in, and here is hopefully a better shot with some better lighting of the sub installed. You know, I don't think I even mentioned it in the beginning of the video, but this is an eight. 
okay this comes you can get bazooka tubes in a six eight or ten inch and this is an eight inch and man i love it it's perfect for the music that i listen to i almost forgot to show you guys the bass knob install which uh super happy with um i mounted it inside this little cubby here that we all have and i'm not going to pull it apart right now but um two screws into the top of this fits in here perfect it looks like it came with the car so I've had the amp and sub installed for a couple days now and I've had some time to mess with it and kind of tune it and I'm going to show you guys how I tuned it now I've never done this before I, I like I said in the beginning of the video I watched a bunch of YouTube videos I read a bunch of articles online there is a ton of information on how to do this and there are some variances so I did what I thought was kind of best which is kind of a mixture of all of it so if you guys are real audiophiles and you know how to do this better than I am, please share it down in the comments so other people can read it. And if it's really good, I'll go ahead and stick it to the top of the comments so when other people come and watch the video, they'll see your comment first. Um, but again, this is what I did. I'm happy with it. Maybe it can be better. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of leaving it the way it is. Um, but anyway, enough talk. Here's what I did. Okay, so for tuning the amp in my situation, I start here at the head unit. With the amp completely disconnected, the amp and sub not connected at all, I played my stereo as loud as I would ever really listen to it, which in my case was the volume was at 25. Now, uh, depending on what head unit you have, you may want to turn your volume up until you hear distortion out of your factory or aftermarket speakers, and it, that's the basically limit that you're going to ever want to listen to music. So that's where your hard line would be. In my case, I never did hear any distortion even a little higher than 25, but I just know myself, man, I've never listened to anything louder than 25 in my car. So that's the first thing you want to do is you want to find where kind of the max volume is on your stereo. So once you find your max volume, what you're going to do is turn it way down, okay? Because you don't want to have any kind of accident where all of a sudden you're sending crazy loud music through your, your speakers and as well as your sub just to get started, okay? So I went ahead and turned that volume way down so I didn't catch myself kind of off guard. The next thing you want to do is disconnect your factory or our aftermarket speakers, your door speakers, your rear speakers. You can either do that behind the actual stereo itself or what I did in my case is I went into the settings on my head unit and I went ahead and turned them all the way down except for the sub level, okay? So there are many ways to do this. I mean, even turning it down all the way here doesn't necessarily turn them off, but it really, really lessens um, their ability to replay anything besides a low tone. So I went ahead and turned those down as low as I could and then I brought the subwoofer level um, right down to basically the middle on the equalizer. All right, so we know the max volume on our head unit. We got our speakers disconnected. We remember to turn the volume way down, right? And uh, now we're ready to plug the amp in, plug the sub in, and before we do anything with the head unit, you're gonna wanna turn the gain all the way down, okay, as far as it can possibly go. Turn it to zero. The next thing you wanna focus on is bass boost, okay? If your amp has bass boost, you wanna turn that all the way down. If there's a switch on your amp that is like a low pass or high pass or some sort of like switch equalizer, mine had a low pass, you wanna switch it over to low pass. And if you have a bass knob on your car, what I did is I put it in the middle. Now some amps, the bass knob adjusts the gain and on other amps, the bass knob adjusts bass boost. I'm not exactly sure what it does on my Planet Audio amp, so I just went ahead and put it in the middle. I figured it would give me enough adjustment up or down once I went ahead and set my gain. Okay, so now we're ready to actually set the gain on the amp. You want to grab your cell phone and go ahead to YouTube and find a 50 hertz uh, tone, okay? You play that tone, and when you initially play it, it's going to be really, really quiet in the car. You're not going to really hear much, but that's when you're going to start to turn that gain up on the amplifier and you will start to hear the tone come through. So then what I did is I went over to my head unit and I started to turn the volume up on the head unit, okay? And I got to that 25 mark. So now I know to go back to the amp and keep turning that gain up. And what you're looking for is some sort of distortion or you're gonna wait to hear that tone change. Once you hear that tone change, back off the gain a little bit and that's basically where you wanna set it. So now you have left on your amp a bass boost setting. You can mess with that if you want. Everything I kind of read with that is leave it alone all the way down. Don't even mess with it. It's apparently it's a great way to kind of shorten the life of your sub or shorten the life of your amp. 
Whatever it is, it scared the heck out of me, so I didn't touch bass boost at all. It's completely turned down on my amp. So the last thing you have to adjust is like a frequency hertz setting or something like that. Um, 90 is where I left mine. Um, basically what that's telling the amp is don't, don't try to reproduce anything above 90. So anyway, guys, I hope that helps, man. I wish I could play it for you so you could hear it, but to be honest with you, even if I did play it and you did hear it, it's never gonna be the same coming through my little GoPro that I record everything on and then you know coming out in a video on YouTube. So just take my word for it. It's really, really nice upgrade. Super happy the way everything sounds in here. Um, it's now time for some Dynamat installation and we'll be doing that in next week's video. I do not have a lot of rattles. I'm very happy to report there are not a lot of rattles. This is not like an earthquake earth shattering you know audio bass setup by any means it is extremely mild um but it's giving me everything that i want and i'm really happy with it so um make sure you hit that like button for the second time in this video make sure you subscribe thank you so much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this one it was a lot of work to get done but i'm really really happy with it and uh i probably will remount that amp at some point maybe underneath the passenger seat Maybe somewhere on the back seat. I have to figure that out. But um, for right now, it's working fine. So maybe I'll just leave it alone forever. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, guys, we'll see you next week. Later.